Um, uh, I am going to uh, do a video on bird feeders because I'm in the process of working on one for a bird house and uh, that'll be posted on uh, actually next weekend. I'm trying to do one a week. It's getting harder to do these because we've got tourism starting up a little bit so there's nobody in my gallery at the moment. So I'm going to try and sneak one of these little excerpts in. Um, I'm going to work with uh, three pounds of clay just under. This is a 20, 22 pound block divided into eight. Um, so that's a, whatever that comes out at. It's less than three pounds. Um, and I'm going to do a two part bird feeder that is hopefully squirrel proof um, with the aid of a little vegetable oil. But anyway, um, here's what I'm going to try and throw so I can give you an idea. This is the pole that um, the feed goes in and then a dome fits over the top. Um, I'll show you a picture of one of those uh, right now actually. Uh, without too much ado, um, I like to get my videos going pretty quickly so you don't end up sitting and listening to somebody talk for a while without getting any skill learning. Um, Alright, so make sure you don't trap any air bubbles underneath. Bang it down and round it off. All right, so first thing is you've got to center it. You know all this stuff. And for those of you who are beginners, welcome to Vaughn Smith's Pottery Channel. All right, we've been getting, uh, it seems like I get about 10 new subscribers every day. Thank you for doing that. Alright, so centering the clay. My wife can get that telephone call. Maybe. Okay, so I've centered the clay. I'm leaving a little pad down here. And I'm actually honing the center part a little bit at a time just by bringing my hands up right to the top letting go slowly and it will thin each time I do this squeeze at the bottom not too much because you don't want to snap it off and bring it up but move fast enough so your hands don't dry out the clay get taller each time. Make sure it stays well lubricated. You can also try it with your fingers like this. See how you can manage that. It tends to dry pretty fast when you're doing this, so you've got to move up that cone fairly quickly, otherwise you will snap it off. And try not to bend it as you're doing it so you stay vertical. It's hard to let go because it wants to put, keep in contact with your finger. See, it's getting there. I can do one more, I think. Dribble water all the way down. Now, it tends to wobble a bit if you're not careful, but squeeze the bottom because you don't need all that thickness. You'll end up trimming out some of it later on. See how it's wobbling? Move up fast. When you get to the top, like I said, it wants to stay stuck to your fingers, so let go slowly with your fingers on both sides to try and do it at the same time. That's about what you need. It should taper and get wider as it gets to the bottom. If you want to, you can just run the metal rib up at this point. Grab off any water. That'll help. It shouldn't continue to get soft because we don't have much more to do. These are fairly fast to throw. Okay, so now press down with your thumb right here. You can do it on either side actually. You're trying to just, without moving that central column, because there's a tendency for that to want to wobble a little bit as you're doing this. You can always re-straighten it. So I'm pressing down. See how it's wobbling? So now we've got to just straighten it again. Keep 
bit wet. And then press down with your fingers, almost like you're just pushing down to the bottom, but leave a quarter inch, and then pull out. You can use a sponge with some water on it to kind of push in there. So basically, I'm holding it to stop it from wobbling a little bit, pulling out with the sponge with my fingers, so I'm going to leave a wall at the edge, and then once you wet the wall here, you put your fingers and squeeze them together. And just pull a wall as you normally would. Try not to thin it too quickly. And then get your water out. Open up this little bowl a little bit, not too much. get all the water off. And that's it for step one. Next step is to make the, the roof or the hood. So starting the same lump of clay Wet it, center the clay. If you're a beginner, you should go back to the earlier videos that I produced on you know, throwing made easy and things like that. Some tips on throwing. There's a whole bunch of them earlier, uh, either this year or late last year. So, so the first thing when you're doing advanced projects like this is to center the clay as much as you possibly can. And because we're trying to make a bowl that's going to become a roof, I'm going to take it really flat because I don't need a tall bowl, I need a shallow bowl. So I'm simply flattening down the clay until I leave about a quarter of an inch. So it's like a plate, and I've done videos on plates before. Let's get my little rubber rib here. So that kind of gives you a flat area there. And then wet the rim and push your fingers together here and pull up a wall. You might have to do that a second or even a third time. You don't want to make it too thin, this is going to be outdoors, blowing around in the wind, so you don't want to get it too thin, but basically you want it as wide as possible. So this thing for me, because I'm throwing on a 12 inch bat, is going to be about 12 and a quarter, maybe even 12 and a half inches across. Get the water out your rim down a little bit. Get the water from underneath and just to make it easy for you later on to cut through just give yourself a little groove underneath using the wooden rib. And that is how to make a dome. So that's step two. Okay, another type of dome you can do, which is a little bit more squirrel proof, because that one that I just did is kind of a flat roof, and the squirrel could potentially land on it, but that's where the vegetable oil comes in if you're in a kind of evil mood and you want to make the squirrel go wee. 
But anyway, this one means the squirrel can't even land on it very easily. So, so you're just going to throw a very shallow bowl that's very wide, but really has a slope to it all the way down. Bowl on the road. So basically leave a quarter inch at least at the bottom there. Remember there's going to be a hole in the middle of this roof where it slides down over the pole. But you basically just make it a big bowl. And you're going to have to try and make it hang out as far as possible. It doesn't have to be very deep because otherwise it'll hang down too close. And that's another part of these. You can make these feeders for different types of birds. So they have a small opening or you can have a much larger opening. I'm going to leave the width of the bottom of the piece quite wide. So it will support the width of this. The main thing is this thing I figured should be at least one and a half times the width of the tray that's underneath it. Otherwise the rain can blow in, especially in Nova Scotia where the rain goes sideways. There we go. Let's get all the water off. Yeah, anything that's going to be hanging around in a tree outdoors, you don't want to make it too thin. So you have to sacrifice durability for weight, because they are a little heavy. But I use the clothes washing line to hang them, and that's very strong. So at the moment it's about, I would say, 11 and a half inches across. I haven't sacrificed much in size for the actual height, but I'm getting all the water off this so it doesn't soak down anymore. And then I can lower it as far as I can go. I want to have a slope, like a ski slope, so when the squirrel lands, he kind of goes shooting off. And they're not so high up in the tree that the squirrel's going to hurt himself either. He's just going to take a little skydive. And that. Is now about almost 12 inches wide. I don't think we sacrificed much at all in the actual width of this. Okay, the next step in the uh, bird feeder is um, to actually put a little collar, like an extension that sticks out about here so that the dome fits on and doesn't fall down too far. So um, let's get you going here. There's a couple of ways you can do this. Um, and um, one of them is just hand rolling a coil, um, but you can also throw a small disc. So we'll do both. If you're going to do the little collar, you don't need much at all, just a tiny little bit of clay, and there's nothing to it. You're just making a little centered piece of clay that's a disc about twice as wide as the actual. You know, I'm not sure what you call this, it's a, a rod, whatever it is, it's sticking up. So it doesn't take very long, I don't think so. So just wet. Now we've got a flat dome and I also have the dome dome. Um, so I'm kind of figuring that if it goes out, I want to decide, is this for finches, sparrows, 
Is it for starlings, which are even bigger than the previous ones? Uh, or is it for you want to feed pigeons? I mean, some people like pigeons. I like pigeons. Uh, then you've got to have a much bigger gap because the pigeons don't can't kind of get underneath. So that's where you, you're just determining, I guess, uh, what you actually want. So I'm just going to scratch here. I'm going to give it slightly bigger gap so that I can give the pigeons a chance. But um, so all I'm doing is scoring and scratching. This has been sitting overnight, so it's uh, it was covered in loosely with plastic. So uh, and then you simply get your coil and you attach it. It's just a piece of clay, basically. You're just trying to firm onto there. You can even just roughly put this on and then trim it without even throwing it a little bit. But I'm just attaching it. And it's to stop the dome from falling down, basically. It's, I don't want to get it... Uh, water will dribble down, so I've just got to try and join it before. Which is why I think throwing the little disc is a bit quicker. But you're simply trying to attach a lump of clay to stop your... disc, lid, roof, whatever, from falling down. See how I'm just pushing the wooden tool in there? I mean, literally, that's enough, but it doesn't look very finished, so I kind of like just making it a bit nicer than that. But you got to be careful, because this is still a little bit floppy. So I'm letting my fingers, I'm holding the rod vertical with the left hand forefinger and thumb and I'm using my other first finger, second finger to squish together and make that disc push out. And that's basically it. And then using a pin, if it's not too soft at the moment, you can actually Make it a little bit nicer. It looks a bit more finished if you do it. All right, so that's the little bit that you have to do to this. And the other one that I've thrown, I can cut a hole in it and just let it go down. But I can do that actually, but it's, uh, I don't need to throw that one because it's actually the one I first did because it's already nice and smooth. I'm just going to cut a hole in it when it's firmed up. And there we go. I'm thinking that um, I've got a tube I'm going to trim the uh, base with. Um, get some power here. So this has to be trimmed totally smooth because you want the squirrel to land on it and slide right off. And once he's done it a few times, he probably won't come back. Um, so it's just a matter of getting them used to the idea that they can't do this. Unless you've got a hundred squirrels, you shouldn't have that much problem with one squirrel or maybe three or four. They'll just get used to the idea that it's Disney World. And remember not to trim it too thin because we want it to basically stand up to a few gale force winds, dogger bank. That was what I used to listen to the night before cast in England. After the old grey whistle test. There you go. Look that up on uh, YouTube. That was some great music back then. And we get hurricanes going through here. And they've been through winter storms. I leave things out all winter. I like to show the customers that things survive in the winter. So let's see what this looks like at the moment. I think it's too small. Um, can you see this? Let's see. I've got to give it a little bit of... I like it to go down and actually rest on the shelf. Where are we? Perfect. You see it? 
So you have your rope. I use clothesline because and crimp it, and it's really strong. Um, but you basically you have a, a dome that protects it somewhat from the rain. Uh, this one is for pigeons. Remember, I said I like pigeons. So uh, anyway, so uh, you can actually make this disc lower down, and your lid will be very only leaving a gap like that, so only the martins and the little tiny sparrows and finches can get in there. So you can design these so you can have it either way. Um, it's uh, it really is up to you. So um, I mean, I can I do various sizes and various types. Anyway, take that off. Fasten it on here as tight as it can. See, without a gifting grip, I think you'd have trouble doing this. It's a bit messy on top. You stick it inside here. And you're gonna have to put your finger, because this will hold it, but it's still gonna wobble a little bit. And then you just, is that the right end? Nope, it's the wrong end. And then you just take off what you have to take off. See, there's no real reason that you can, couldn't just sponge this or cut it off by hand. But because I threw everything through and I, I had to use my brain and figure out how I could trim these. Now you could throw yourself a specific chuck to do this too, instead of a cardboard tube like this. You could literally throw your own truck chuck that is meant to do this. The bottom is very smooth, but I've shown you this before using the old ribs that we throw with. Once they get marks on them, you can just use them as trimming devices. They help smooth or trim. And that's it. Put a couple of holes in the bottom, three maybe. Um, not too big because the seeds will fall through, um, but that's just in case water blows in here, it will dribble out again. Um, so that's the only thing I would do to these. There we go. Get that out of there. Or a little, yeah, what we use for teapots. But that is a bird feeder, all right? So um, I've got finished ones out of the outside that um, I could take a quick picture of um, so you can see them hanging, um, which I'll put at the end of this video. Um, and just remember, I'll repeat, it, it won't extend the video too long, is that disc that holds the lid up could be placed down here or anywhere up the tube to determine how big a gap you have here so that you can limit who gets into here for the actual food. Um, and you simply, to stop the squirrels, you can either make the dome much bigger, which I don't want to waste too much kiln space with these, that's the problem. Um, but basically, uh, I put some vegetable oil over the top, which doesn't last too long, it will get drier over a period of a few days anyway. Um, but it means that if a squirrel discovers it and they leap, they fly, they will fly right over to here and they may get a grasp on here, but it's so slippery here that um, they will just slide off and all that. That's the theory. Nobody's invented a squirrel proof bird feeder yet, but this is my attempt at it. Okay, so here we go. This is a two pound lump of clay. So these are the bird feeders that's earlier. I've got this whole video going now, so this, this part will become part of the other video. And this is the bottom. But the one I threw before was very tall, and you don't have to have it very tall. Um, because like I was saying, I like to feed pigeons as well, and I even feed the crows, and they're really big birds. And so my other feeder, with the big tall one, can actually get a crow and a a pigeon underneath there. But look, this is all you have to do to make it slightly smaller. It'll start wobbling again once if you don't keep your fingers wet, especially. You've got to keep it well lubricated. And I'm going to try and leave a little thickness here. I'll show you what I'm going to do in a sec. So let's get this. In fact, I think I'll throw the top part first. I'm going to make a narrow piece here, but not too narrow because we've got to get a hole in here. So 
that's about that. And using my metal ribs, see, I'm going to play an experiment on the fly here to try and make this a little bit easier to make. Hey, how about that? Let's see if I can do the same. My idea was to do it from underneath, but I did that from the top. Let's get it well lubricated because it's going to stick to my fingers when I put this pressure on with this tool especially. I'm going to try and pull up and make that coil just by angling the rib. I can narrow this off a little bit more as well if I want to. But let's come up here, grab some clay. It's starting to stick to the wheel at that point because I did pull a little bit of clay off. But there we go. I, I actually joined this separately in the other video, early part of this video. Um, this needs to be sticking out a little further, I think. I think I can grab a little bit more. I wonder if I can grab it all the way from down there. Let's see this. what happens here. Yeah, it's just going to come off, I guess. Yeah. It will still work, because I've got a nice extension there. I don't want to make it too thin, though, either, because it will break off. But then this has to make sure it's wide enough to get the hole drilled in. But give enough so that the hole can come down here and catch onto that. Now, before we go too far, let's get the bottom tray. Let's hold that so it doesn't wobble and go down a bit. I may have to get some more water here. I don't want to make it tall, but I'd like to think that that is thicker at the bottom and gradually gets thinner, just for the look of it. And then without doing anything to the center part, so I make it wobble, I'm just pressing down. I'm going to have to straighten it a bit. Not to make it thin, remember, either this is going to be outdoors. And that looks like it will work. So that's what you can get with two pounds of clay, not making it too... Thick, uh, too thin. You don't want it thin. And you can, I mean, that's a lot of bird food to put inside there. You know, you'd have to fill it up every day, but let's move this out of the way. Okay. We know how that worked, but had some issues. So let's try it now. With the knowledge that we learned, let's try and do it again. These feeders are not one of my best sellers not by a, a long shot, but I sell them every so often. So here we go, I'm going to make the bowl. Before I do anything on that top part, I'm going to make the bowl first. Let's dry it out.
get some height on that little edge. Okay, so this time we don't have to worry about the ball, so that's the first part we made. And now let's go for the, the column. Okay, so we got our little column. When you use your knuckles like this or the flats of your hands, it dries much faster. So you've got to chase that wet spot all the way up really quickly. Now before it gets thin and too tall, I'm going to try throwing that little let's pull a piece up and a piece down. I'm going to try doing this together. So I'm pulling clay up from the bottom and pushing it down from the top. It's the Space Needle from Seattle, I guess. Remember not to make this too narrow because you've got to put a hole in there where your clothesline wire is going to go. And you don't have to use clothesline. I've actually used picture wire, galvanized picture wire in the past. That works as well. Okay, so we have our space needle. I'm going to thicken up the edge a little bit. There's a lump under there. I could actually squeeze my fingers together and get that wider again. There we go. So now it's like twice the width of the hole that will have to be in the top. So let's see how, how far, how far. Is this still pretty? Yep, it is. So I'm going to push my fingertips together, both hands, and try and pull this up tall. Starting to get dry. So I was very careful not to stay on a dry spot there, down there. But that's about as thin as I dare think I should take this. So this will be quite for small birds. So when you've got one like with us, I'm not going to have a, um, it's going to take it a little narrower at the bottom there. Just give me a bit of a height, maybe gain a, a centimeter there. All right, so let's, this is what I did on the last one. I've got that lump of clay. So I'm just pushing that base down flatter without squishing it out too much. All right. So I think now we've figured out how to make the, the bottoms, trying it three different ways. And this is a, uh, you know, I made these in a different way before, uh, but now I've just modified my technique to make it easier to make these.